And uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about another variation of majority element. Uh, now, this question it, it became uh, kind of like, you know, a little bit more complex um, and uh, started showing up more often uh, during uh, the technical interviews, uh, just because like, you know, it, it involves a little bit more uh, thought process, uh, like, you know, how do you approach? And there are several um, uh, what if and, and like, you know, things uh, that can, uh, that you have to account for. So uh, there, uh, this, uh, this question uh, is sort of like a little bit more uh, complex than what we saw a variation in uh, the majority element in the last video. So we're going to take a closer look at this one and see like how do we go about solving this. Now, let's take a look at the question again. Uh, it's slightly changed. So you have like, you know, an integer array once again uh, of size n, and then uh, you need to find all the elements uh, basically that appear more than n by three times. Now you you not only have to find the majority element that appears more than third of the array, but you also have to collect all those items and basically return them. So it's not just one item anymore. It's basically an array of item that's been returned. Okay, so that adds uh, a little bit uh, to the complexity. And you can ask some of the follow up questions to the interviewer. Uh, for example, like, you know, uh, is it like always going to be the case when uh, they're going to be uh, the elements are going to be there. Uh, so basically what was given in the last uh, uh, video, uh, what was given in, as a part of the question that array is never going to be empty and uh, it's always going to have a majority element and stuff like that. Uh, you can actually ask this follow-up question that at least one uh, element is going to be at the majority uh, that's going to appear more than n third time, or is it going to be um, uh, like, you know, where it could be empty as well. So depending upon how it goes, like, you know, interviewers can actually lead you in that direction. Um, so for our case, like, you know, we'd always assume that there is one, at least one element that actually there is there uh, that appears more than third of the size of the array. And uh, it can be more than that. And our array is not going to be empty. Okay. With that, let's go ahead and uh, take a crack at it. And uh, I will uh, take another pause for 10 seconds so you get the opportunity to pause the video. Uh, try to come up with your own solution and come back when you guys are ready. All right. Hope then that went well. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at one of the possibility, uh, one of the possible solutions. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take a slightly uh, uh, different approach uh, in uh, this one. And what we are going to do is we're going to leverage the power of dictionary or hash map uh, if you're in the Java world. Um, and we're gonna store uh, the number itself and its count okay so you're gonna store number as the key uh, for the dictionary and count as the value uh, for that uh, entry okay and then we're gonna leverage another loop to basically iterate over the dictionary and see if the value in the key value pair uh, for that dictionary item um, is more than the n by three times the so third of the uh, size of the array. And if it is there, then we're going to insert that into a result array that we're going to return at the end. Now, remember that we are doing two loops, but not, we are not doing two loops inside each other. So it's not nested, it's actually at the same level as each other. In the last video, we didn't really compute like, you know, the time complexity because that was part of a given challenge for you guys. Like, you know, but it was very similar to the video before or a question before that that we tackled where it was like, you know, just one, um, one loop. So you could actually easily take that learning from the first video, first question you solved and transfer that learning over to compute the time complexity for the last one. This one, we can actually do it because it's a different kind of situation and we wanna learn how to compute the time complexity. So let's go ahead and take a look like, you know, sort of a pseudo code solution for this and then we're gonna jump into the lab. 
Okay, so what we are uh, doing once again is uh, we're gonna create a function that's gonna expect an array of integer. Uh, we're gonna create a dictionary. Uh, that dictionary is gonna have basically integer and integer as key value there. Okay, and then uh, uh, we're gonna basically uh, keep another variable for our result that we're gonna return. And uh, we're gonna say if uh, basically loop over all the numbers and just track the count, just count them, uh, like you know how many times, e how many times each number appear in the array. Okay, so once you do that, uh, you can simply um, uh, look at the dictionary and say, hey, uh, for this number because we are using that actual number as the key, we can actually find out does the dictionary has that number if it has that number that means we want to add to its value so initially when it's not there we're going to initialize that or we're going to put that number in with value one okay so that's going to be the count so it has already been appeared once okay so next time when the number appears again uh, we're going to uh, add one to it make it count two so for example for three in this case, when three is inserted or like, you know, looped over for the first time, uh, it's not gonna be there. So dictionary is gonna say, hmm, it's not there. So let me insert it with value one. So it was, it would be inserted with value one. Then uh, you get two in the next iteration and uh, two is not there as well. So dictionary would insert two with count one as well. Now three, when three appears again, dictionary is gonna find it and then, uh, we're going to use that value that we have found, uh, like, you know, from the dictionary. And the value is going to be one because the count is what we are storing as a value. So we're going to add to that. So we're going to say one becomes two. So we know that, you know, three appears twice. And then uh, our dictionary is updated. Okay. So that makes sense. Uh, now we're going to go uh, into another loop outside. So that loop ended, like, you know, we've got our count for each item in the dictionary. And then we create a variable like three, uh, basically k is equal to three. You don't have to create it. It's just for the flexibility. Uh, because if let's say three or says like it should appear n by four or like, you know, uh, at least uh, fourth uh, part of the array is going to be uh, uh, should be that particular uh, element. Uh, so I mean they can change uh, to like you know any number, but uh, that's why we created this. But you don't have to really create it. So uh, this k is equal to three is just there for convenience. Then you go and loop over the dictionary. Now dictionary when you're looping over, it gives you key value pair. Okay, and what you can do is you can take the value that you're getting from the current iteration and you can say um, that take the array of integer dot count, basically however many numbers are there in the array and divide that by uh, three in this case, because we are, we are hoping third of the array is basically that majority element. And if that condition satisfies, then in our result array, add that key that uh, we are uh, the item that we are iterating over so the, that key is added and eventually when this loop is over um, you actually return the result okay so let's take a look at uh, let's do a lab really quickly and uh, take a look at how we're going to be um, doing this uh, within the code so i'm going to open repel again and um, Basically, you're going to create our func maturity. And it's going to return another integer array. OK, so first we're going to create our dictionary. OK, initialize it. And we're going to create our result. And initialize. Okay, first thing now we can do is iterate over and keep that count or count each item how many times it appears and keep that in the dictionary for item in array. We're simply going to say if dictionary has 
if dictionary does not have that item, oh, the dictionary has that item, that means like if the item, uh, if this, this part does not return as nil, we're going to say uh, dictionary item is equal to item. We need to force unwrap. This is actually because we know in this case there is an item. And if that is not the case, that means uh, dictionary does not have that item um, present. So we're simply going to say that items value is going to be one. Okay, so this is one loop. Uh, we iterate over. We actually get everything, all the counts together. Now uh, I'm going to skip that uh, k part and uh, simply going to do the key value pair thing. So key value in dictionary. Okay, and here uh, we're going to say if uh, the value that we are iterating over is greater than array dot count. Uh, divide by three, okay. Then we're gonna simply say result dot append that value, that key, okay. And uh, we're just gonna loop over this uh, one more time and return the result, all right. So if you go print and uh, majority. So let's apply three to three first and uh, see what happens here. So you get three, okay? Uh, now in our example, we had another input. Uh, the input was uh, triple one, double two, triple three. So triple one, double two, and triple three. Yes. Now triple one, double three, triple two. All right, that'll that'll do it. Yes, pretty much same, just numbers. So I'll uh, get one and two if you get triple three, three just to match the slides. And run it, you should get one and two or two or one, it doesn't matter, but yeah, so that's what you get. Now, let's compute the time complexity for this one. So, this is always going to be one of one, uh, only one time executed. This is going to be n time executed because um, we're going to iterate over n size array. So, all these uh, other things are that are inside the loop that are going to be iterated over n times. So, um, Right. I'm just gonna say n times. So, I mean, uh, it's either or, uh, but like you know, in for bigger input, it's it's not gonna matter much. So uh, that and this is again gonna be um, executed n times, and all the operations of these these ones are gonna be n times. Okay, and this is only gonna be one time. So if you take all these numbers, like you know, how many times these things. Uh, sort of uh, up here. So if you do one plus, so let's do this, one plus one, two, and then you have three plus, how many times n up here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so six n, for example. Um, so we actually eliminate or we actually discard three and six. So uh, once again, uh, this is O of n. So order of n is what we have achieved in this case, uh, which is a good solution. Um, honestly, order of n for array most of the time is good. Um, so uh, even n squared is good in certain cases. We can actually look into those solutions, like you no know, questions where it's n squared um, uh, and, and stuff. So we're going to see. But depending upon the question, how hard the question is, actually, the, the time complexity changes. Um, now, uh, once again, I wanted to emphasize that the two loops does not mean that you have um, your time complexity is going to be bad. Two loops nested inside or n loops nested inside. Let me more generalize that concept. n loops uh, nested into each other is what leads to a bad performance, OK? Because it's going to basically exponentially grow for larger input. 
So if you have a situation where you can actually break it down into like, you know, same level, that's perfect because that's going to keep your time complexity um, uh, really low and really consistent. And uh, you get the benefit of, of having basically where input grows and your uh, basically based upon your input, your time complexity does not grow as much. Okay, so hope that was uh, helpful. And uh, uh, in the next video, we're gonna take a look at another uh, similar problem uh, dealing with array that has uh, been appeared in real interview question. Okay, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.